Hello everyone, it's good to see you back. I know one but the same may sound controversial, but Battle Doors Wraith Weavers are actually pretty good. Uh, seriously, how many of you have used the following exotic in Destiny 2 fully? As I know, not many people have opted in or even given the exotic a try, which I know is okay, but I want to show you why this exotic is quite incredible now for endgame. This is one of the most easiest prismatic builds available that actually makes full use of Winter's Wrath in subclass and can also be useful as support if you choose to do so. To start with the general aim and exotic of the build, our aim is to make sure our super is easily achievable to activate at a moment's notice, and also combine the usage of prismatic and stasis in conjunction with each other as often as possible. For this, we will be using Wicked Implement and Balador's Faith Weavers. To start with Balador's, with his exotic effect, Hearts of Ice, it states, Your Winter's Wrath Shockwave deals increased shatter damage. Allies in range of your Winter's Wrath Shockwave and Frost Pulse gains Frost Armor and deal increased damage with stasis weapons. The following exotic has been slept on by the community a lot, simply because its exotic effect doesn't feel that worth the investment. I believe before it got an update, it would do increased shatter damage and would only buff ally stasis weapons, which never made sense as this would require teams to coordinate for a small buff. Now though, it has been given that extra bonus of frost armor, which makes its uses more viable for those who pick it up and wish to focus on stasis only builds. Also to note, both frost armor and stasis weapon buff also get applied to us after super usage, so that frost armor and stasis weapon buff as well is all going to make a difference for you in end game. This makes the exotic more rewarding after usage, as at least the effect doesn't require players to fully invest into a support build solely for stasis allies. Our second exotic is Wicked Implement with its exotic effect Creeper Attrition, which states, Rapidly landing precision hits causes targets to become slowed. A reliable scout rifle that doesn't get much talk about nowadays. Uh, the following is perfect for applying constant freeze and slow the targets, and works amazingly against overloads and unstoppables as well. And most importantly, the weapon can create shards after destroying stasis crystals and landing final blows on enemies, and this alone will grant you back quite a bit of melee energy in the process. Ultimately, this weapon has quite a lot of flexibility that pairs well with the exotic armor in gameplay. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. A Feed the Void, where defeating targets with any ability kills will activate Devour. Helion, where activating your class ability will produce a solar mortar that will lob flaming projectiles at distant targets and scorch them. A Facile Command, where freezing or suppressing targets reloads your equipped weapon, increases stability, aim assist, airborne effectiveness, and also grants shards or void breach. A Facile of Dominance, where your void grenades can weaken targets, where your art grenades jolts them. A facet of hope, where having an elemental buff will regenerate your class ability faster. A facet of balance, where rapidly defeating light targets grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And a facet of ruin, which will increase the size and damage when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target. A solar ignition's area effect also gets increased. As the kit focuses more or less on stasis as the main control, I found that enhancing the destructiveness of stasis will allow us to garner super energy a lot more faster than other means. A faster command and ruin both focuses on improving our stasis and solar ignition sources more by increasing their effectiveness by tenfold. I've added Penendral Blast to the kit since it has been buffed with more range, and the quick access to freezing targets on the spot has actually saved me more times than I can count. Faster of Dominance will provide overall debuff to anyone caught by it which fits in nicely for the supportive part of the build. Hope will make sure a Helion stays active as long as possible, and will also be key source for getting our light transcendence energy fast. And then lastly, balance is here for, well, balance of course. This is how I envision the build, to be both supportive and destructive that fit into the theme of the exotic overall. For the modern stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority, with strength also playing a part. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mortal needed for this area, as having Devour will be enough. Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 cooldown via Vortex Grenade. Vortex is ideal for the damage boost it provides for the overall kit, but at the same time, I can see Cold Snap Grenades also being handy if you want to lean more into the Stasis kit. 
this will vary from player to player, so I do recommend you play around and see how you would like to go about this. At the same time, I also recommend you include these mods for the build. Momentum Transfer times 1 for a 12% melee buff, Impact Induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, Bolstering Destination times 1 for a 12% class ability regen, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. Additional mods we have the following a Stasis Siphon for creating orbs of power via Stasis weapons, Charged Up times 2 for a plus 2 in armor stacks we carry. A stasis weapon surge times 2 for a 17% stasis weapon buff, ashes to assets for super energy via grenade kills, and heavy finder, reserves, and scavenger ammo mods are highly recommended for the weapons we are using. So, as we have covered our exotic primary weapon, I would then advise you to pick super additional weapons for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits towards the build. A secondary, we have Callus Meteor Tool with incandescent and threat detector. The following is great in endgame as it fires fast and works really well with spreading additional solar damage to anyone caught in its radius. For free to play players, this is more for the anti barrier side of things, so I can see the aberrant action sidearm also being good to have, as it can fit into the build quite well, and can also get a pretty explosive combo worth investing down the line. Heavy, we have the recurrent impact machine gun with field prep and headstone. This here is going to be my main powerhouse for creating tons of explosive headstones after pushing kills, and will also be useful against bosses and such with its high DPS. I can get around 700 plus in the reserves of the weapon, so it's definitely worth the investment for most endgame players. On the other hand, if you're a free to play player, then the Cold Combat Rocket Launcher with Chill Club is also a good alternative to get if you can manage it. If not, then any machine gun of your choosing is also fine to pick. While many people will say Battle Door sucks and you should never use it, I on the other hand like to advocate players to try all the exotic and combos out, just to get a more personal opinion. The exotic in question provides three things that will make it highly favourable to most players in GMs, dungeons, PvP, or even raids, and that is a free overshield, increased stasis weapon damage, and large mobbing damage buff that can easily make certain deathly scenarios a major comeback. Now, one thing I like to do when I get the super is to plot the shockwave as much as possible, just so that means that me and my allies are always protected no matter where they go in game. This effect does not take any super energy from you surprisingly, and allows us to be more aggressive with the team when moving as one. Just this one feature personally is enough to actually want the use of the super more often, since you'll also get an additional features upon use. I would say though, it does need a more passive effect while we play, as this tends to be the biggest weakness that the vast majority of super based exotics tend to suffer the most on. Plus, it's also quite limited to the super, so unless you have a way of getting your super up quickly, you're very limited in what you can and can't do. Now, I did try to fill that area in through creation of stasis shards that both me and my team will benefit from, however, this isn't the ultimate fix that the exotic requires, and needs something a bit more appealing that make the players want to use the exotic more often. The build with all its faults is still good as the flexibility of prismatic, melding into our stasis kit actually feels welcome in a way compared to just using stasis subclass. With how customizable the subclass is, we can pretty much take this build however we like, which to me is where the exotic actually feels viable now. That's just my two cents, we're playing it for long, but if you after a change with playing with the cover meta, then you should give this fun setup a try. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. Well, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and sub while you're here. Dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do invite you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.